Okay, as I've been um, walking back and forth between the university and the wine center, uh, I've been passing this sign, and I guess um, you, you've also passed this, perhaps. And um, I, I've seen it many times before, but it suddenly seemed to me to, 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 to gain a greater significance in relation to the experience that I was happening, having uh, at this conference over the last couple of days. Something has been taking shape. And uh, that just seemed to encapsulate to me what's been going on here over the last couple of days uh, through this conference. Something has been under construction. Something has been taking shape. Um, building, of course, on deep and uh, deep foundations and, and broad foundations, but nevertheless, something new uh, is, is being added uh, and developed. And it feels to me like a further strengthening of a community of interest and practice. It's incredibly exciting. And also it feels to me, uh, certainly from my perspective, that something further is taking shape in my own mind, in my own thinking, as I've been uh, encountering some of the, um, some of the presentations um, of the conference and talking to, to some colleagues, not as many as I would like. Um, but nevertheless, lots of thoughts sparked in my mind, and I'm sure in, in yours too. It seems to me that there's been a lot of engaged learning going on, hasn't there? That we've, everybody's been melting like mad. And, um, and, I, and, I, and I started out by saying I was looking forward to the end because I was really looking forward to seeing what was going to come out, you know, of, of this process of something taking shape. Um, and so th that's what this session is, is really intended to, to help facilitate um, as John says, to, you know, some reflection, uh, some further exchange around that, and some ideas about what as a community or as, uh, and a set of groups, perhaps, interest groups within the community, and as individuals, we all want to take away and, and do as a consequence of, of what we've um, been participating in. It's been a wonderful conference. It's been full of really inspiring, richly inspiring examples of practice, great ideas, stimulating debate, um, really thoughtful, really insightful um, contributions, lots of creative thinking, and lots of scholarship as well, um, and uh, underpinned by that, 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 that research thinking, which has is, is just been fantastic. Um, for me, what's been impressive and important is that we've been able to share MELT initiatives, but also um, understand, uh, evidence around impact. Um, so impact on um, student experience, on student outcomes, um, student satisfaction, student retention, and so on. So that's been really very exciting to hear about the research and evaluation that's been taking place. So, um, I am going to plan for us to, to reflect back over the conference as a whole, identify the special highlights for you, um, things that struck you as especially interesting, useful, intriguing. Um, don't forget, though, about, of course, about the things that may have struck you as um, problematic in some way, troublesome, not quite fitting with, you know, with, with, with how you may have been thinking or, or be, be, before, and to interrogate those, those things uh, as well. Uh, we started out with a challenge from um, John, I think it was, a, a, around, you know, let's um, melt our minds, let's think differently. So I want to invite you and us all to think about, well, how, how are we thinking differently now? Uh, after, after these, these three days. And Mick talked about students as partners as a threshold concept, if you remember. Um, and um, again, a real, a real sort of co a concept that once you've, once you've passed that threshold, you can't go back because you think differently and you see, you see everything differently. Um, what, 
So my question is, in what way are, are, are you, are we thinking differently um, now um, in comparison with, with Monday? Um, I thought I would share with you, before I invite you to, 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 to kind of reflect on that, I thought I would share with you my own, the thoughts that are buzzing around my own head. But I am hugely conscious of the fact that I'm sit, you know, speaking to a room full of um, RSD and MELT experts who have been thinking about RSD and MELT for many years, many of you, um, not all, but thinking about it, developing it, participating in creating it. It has been, if there is an it, this, this family of, of approaches, it has already been co-created and it will continue to be because that's the way in which uh, John has, has, has worked uh, with, with this framework, which I think is, is fantastic. So, um, so I'm really conscious that I'm, I'm somebody who has some rather superficial knowledge of the RSD and, uh, and of the MELT family, but I am somebody who has uh, a particular interest in inquiry learning and, and some experience there. So I've been thinking about the relationship with, with, with inquiry learning and, and some of the theories and practices around inquiry learning that I'm familiar with. Anyway, so here goes with just a few of my observations. Um, and some of them just really um, very uh, basic observations about it is incredible, I think, and, and fascinating the multiple ways in which the RSD and the MELT family uh, are being used. Um, the RSD is providing the basis for development of a wide range of contextualized MELT models in terms of um, supporting different purposes in learning and teaching, so different types of, of learning outcome. We've just been talking about process and product, actually. And, and, and that's a fascinating conversation. I think if I, well, I have the opportunity to, to, to make my two penneth now, don't I? So I think, I think I'm, what my two penneth in that, argue, that debate is, um, is it a false uh, question? Is, is that a false dichotomy? Um, because uh, we might see, we could see process as product. For example, and if we do see process as product, then perhaps we start to think differently uh, about you know how we define and articulate learning outcomes, and um, and how we uh, advocate for process-oriented learning outcomes, um, and 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 get those accepted in 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 you know in in, in institutional kind of thinking. Anyway, that's my tooth on, on on that conversation, but, but I have been struck by how the MELT models um, have been, are being applied to support different learning outcomes in terms of deep discipline knowledge, but also generic and transferable attributes as well, which are, as we know are so important that very often are allied with, with employability, uh, but not always. I think it's also to do with citizenship and uh, you know, cultural awareness and all sorts of other attributes, the, the kinds of things that we seek to, to, to nurture in our students as, 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 they, as they move through um, university or, or, or school. Um, so we've also seen um, MELT applied to different disciplines. Um, we've seen it being talked about as being mapped against accreditation requirements in some disciplines, and I was tremendously impressed um, with uh, a presentation that I saw, and I can't, I don't know what, if I can spot her in the audience, um, but, but which was very, very careful work mapping the RSD against accreditation uh, requirements and program level learning outcomes in a particular discipline area, which I think is, is, is fantastic to be engaging uh, with those accreditation bodies. Um, we've talked about the, the MELT in different modes, face-to-face, -face, blended, fully online. Um, and we've talked about it uh, at different sorts of scale. So we've talked about applying MELT and RSD to whole course applications. Um, uh, and also, you know, design of, of, of learning tasks and activities and assessment for whole courses. Um, perhaps not so much whole programs, actually. At least I haven't been in those discussions. 
um, but also to, to single one-off learning activities. So it's extensible, you know, and being used in, in different, different ways. And of course, we've been talking about it in, in, um, in relation to different sectors, higher education, TAFE, uh, school, and so on. It's, we've been talking about uh, the RSD and MELT as a tool for reflection, and of course, task and assessment design for engaged learning. I was really um, inspired by some of the discussions I've heard around using MELT and RSD in pre- and post-assessment in work-integrated learning. So either side of um, placements, uh, for example. Um, it also strikes me that different pedagogical approaches are being accommodated and debated um, around, around this. For example, this question of whether to introduce the framework explicitly to students, and, and if so, when, um, is, a, is, I think, a, you know, it's a pedagogical question, um, and, and there's, there's debate on that, and different approaches are being used to serve different purposes. Um, there's also been debate that I've heard of, uh, about um, the, vir the virtues of supporting linear or less or more iterative and less linear s approaches to skills development. And again, pedagogical decisions um, relating to context, different views on that. Um, I was very interested in the work skills development framework and um, Sue's ambition to, ch what she said, her ambition to change work integrated learning pedagogy using the framework. And um, I, I thought that was exciting. She also said something that actually people kind of drew breath in the room. Those of you who were in the room with me when she said it, I think we will we'll remember this. People went, oh, what a great and interesting idea. She was talking about the next step that she envisaged in the development of the work skills development framework is to kind of think about it in relation to um, the way in which we, we know that work is going to be changing, the very radical ways in which work is going to be changing, not least as a consequence of um, the, the, uh, the, the onward march of the robots, you know, um, it, it, artificial intelligence. And so she said, I'm, you know, I'm going to be working on adjusting the work skills development framework to respond to artificial intelligence in the ways in which we expect it to be impacting on work, but I guess also the ways we expect it to be impacting on learning. And it struck me as ra raising a whole range of intriguing questions, not only relevant to the, the, work, the WSD, um, but also to MELTs more generally and, and higher education pedagogy more broadly. So I thought, wow, that was a, an exciting um, kind of idea coming up there. Um, we've also been talk talking about, um, well, the co-creation of frameworks, as I, as I mentioned, and working, uh, working in co-creative ways through applying the frameworks with students, in partnership with students, but also in partnership with employers and community members. And again, I was interested in an example about how um, the frameworks are being used in, in work integrated learning. For example, um, industry mentors using the frameworks to support students um, working out in, in placements um, and uh, yeah, uh, interesting examples. So um, those are just a few of the things that I observed about the themes that we've been covering and I know I will not have you know, touched on everything uh, by far. Um, so actually I was going to I don't want to speak for too long, but I had some, some questions myself. And John, it's, we, I haven't really finished with questions yet, because I, I was thinking, this is a good time to be reflecting back, but also thinking, well, what are those further questions? Because, you know, a, a good conference, which this has most definitely been, is a conference that is generative of more questions for to pursue, more inquiry to pursue, whether that's through trying something new in practice or some conceptual thing, you know, some kind of theoretical point. And, and I want to invite you to think about, you know, your, the questions that you have, not a, only in relation to the panel discussion, but more broadly in relation to the conference as a whole when you, when you are reflecting on it. What are your questions? Um, so I had a few questions of my own. Um, some of these may be very naive questions um, in relation to the, 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 uh, the frameworks themselves. Um, but I was thinking about, inter I was thinking about trends in, in higher education and thinking about interdisciplinary learning and how challenging I think that is. 
to set up opportunities for students to, to learn, um, to engage with, with you know, multifaceted problems in, in interdisciplinary groupings and, and bringing together interdisciplinary knowledges. And I was thinking about, ah, I wonder how the RSD you know, can, can help us uh, with, with that. Are there examples that can be drawn on? Uh, that's something that would, would interest us, I think, here at Adelaide. Um, I was also thinking about um, an agenda we have here at Adelaide, which is around um, supporting our students' digital capability de development. And, of course, um, th I think there's a lot of overlap between the RSD and, and Melton and, and, and that uh, side of things, digi students' digital skills. I wonder um, whether there's you know, w more work that could be done to, to make more explicit the, those specifically digital capabilities that, that, that map onto the RSD. Um, uh, maybe I'll, yeah, leave out some of these uh, questions. I did wonder about the concept of engagement, though. Um, we've, you know, we, we're talking about melt rather than malt, uh, which might be um, models of active learning. Uh, and teaching, but I, I, I just had this sort of question in my mind about what do we mean by engagement? You know, we, we're using it, this word all the time, this concept, and it's at, at, the, it's at the heart of what, what we're talking about here. I think we all agree on that. Um, but are we using it more or less as a, quite loosely, more or less as a synonym for active learning? Or, and or do we mean something more specific? about engagement. And of course, there are, you know, there are theories around engagement, there are measures of engagement, and so on. And it was just really a question about what does this community mean by engagement, and, and probably multiple things. Um, and is there, is there more of a conversation to have about really what the concept of engagement is at the foundation of, 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 of this, you know, the conceptual frameworks that, that we're using here and talking about here? So, I, so I've written down in my notes, is there potential benefit? Well, what have I said? Is, malt, is m melt the same as malt, active learning? And does this matter, or is there potential benefit in a more explicitly theorized approach to the E in melt? Is there a need to measure engagement, as well as other indicators of edu educational impact, or can we go straight to measuring learning gains? So you can see the sort of way my mind is, is, is kind of working. I'm also very interested in whole institution uses of, of the frameworks, um, how we, we can use them to leverage more systemic educational change. So I'm really fascinated in this question and the discussion around top-down, bottom-up, middle-through, you know, how do we, how do we really um, uh, engage organic change, but let's... But, you know, some, for, certainly for somebody in my position and my role, I'm, interest, I'm interested in organic change, but I want it to be quick, you know. <laughs> so how can, how can that happen, you know? Um, and um, it's, it's an open question. Um, so Mick, Mick raised questions earlier on about how can we engage students and staff more with, with the kind of conceptual uh, ideas uh, uh, that, that, that we're working with, with here. It's really important. Okay, that's just throwing out a few of my, my things. Um, in the time that, that we have left, um, I would like to invite you now uh, to consider where the melting of your mind um, is at and where you will be going next with it. And can I just, uh, I'm just gonna leave a sort of pause really for you each to think about just think back over the presentations and the discussions that you've been in. What's especially struck you? What will you, what do you remember now and want to, want to remember? Uh, examples, good ideas, just reflect on this as individuals just for a couple of minutes, one minute maybe. I'm not going to ask you to um, comment at this moment on that, but just sort of touch base with where you're at. 
what's at the forefront of your mind. And then, this is where I wanted to come back to questions again. So, um, I, 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 uh, because I think we need to leave with questions. Um, have a think about the further questions that have been stimulated for you by your experience. They may be questions about any aspect of, of MELT, the why, the how, the what ifs. Um, perhaps it, questions that the community could explore collectively, interest groups or partnerships could form around them and so on. And this is where I would like you to turn to your neighbor and just do a one-way thing to begin with. So person A, can you um, just uh, explain to your neighbor what the most important question is that you're going to leave this, uh, this event with? And just have a quick conversation about that. But it's a one-way, so, so please don't exchange that. Just, just choose one of you, uh, person A, just explain what your question is. I have two related questions, actually. One is that um, in the institutions where you are already working with this RSD framework, do you have trouble getting students to buy into the whole process of learning one? And if so, would it be a good idea to involve employers to sort of see the value of this? Because it is a good thing that the students are developing. It's a mindset, isn't it, at the end of the day, uh, to have this research sort of mindset. Um, it helps them to sort of identify problems, go back to the core every time, you know, and to sort of work things out in a very um, systematic way. So, but has there ever been a problem with getting buy-in from students to see the value and you know, do students come back and say, why are we doing this, it this way? You know, why don't you just tell us what we need to learn? Uh, and if so, I mean, would it be a good idea to get employers in on it and say that, no, this is, this is a good way because the process is important? Mm -hmm. Thank you. As I said, it, we, we can't, we can't have, start a new discussion with answers, but perhaps, you know, that has now stimulated you to get onto Facebook and come, you know, and have a conversation about that. That's great. Another question. Uh, yeah, uh, mine is uh, mine is how can I use the work skill development framework to rationalise my own e-portfolio that I'm developing as a model for students to do the same. Hmm. Okay. Thank you very much, Chad. David. My question really is. So within my community or our community of practice, within this space and within the group of people that I work within university in South Australia and actually across Australia, um, it works. And it works extremely well and it's worked well with the students that I teach. But the, the question that I have, and it's one that I think Phil is going to eventually need to answer at some <laughs> level, um, but not today, is how do I take this knowledge and distribute it to my peers that aren't in my community of practice? Mm -hmm. And how do I do it quickly? Because it is so good. Mm. Thanks, David. One more question, yes. Yes, I have one question because I'm an international student here. So I'm wondering how can the framework be used to make the research process transparent to the international student like me? Because uh, there's a lot of differences between the expectations from maybe the education education system in Australia, for example, and the education system in my context, for example. So maybe there's some kind of uh, crash between different expectations. So I'm wondering if the framework like this can be used to make the process transparent to both the two. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, colleagues. So finally, um, and we are nearly finished now, of course, the final question for us all is, well, what are we going to do differently? What are, are, are we going to do differently as a consequence of things that we've thought about and discussed over the last couple of days? Um, would anybody like to, I think it would be nice to, to hear from, if, if you would, share, 
things that you're going to do differently, and, and when, actually. Um, and you might want to sort of make notes to yourselves. I don't know whether they're sending yourselves emails. Sometimes I do that um, to remind myself of what I said I would do. Um, and, um, or get a colleague to, to you know, prod me, remind me. Uh, you said you would do that. Yeah. Have you done it? Uh, what are you going to do? So this is an easy one because uh, I was in a, involved with a group of colleagues giving a workshop and one of the participants in the workshop uh, came up with a brilliant idea. I was focused on using students as partners and I thought by using synonyms for the various facets of the RSD, I could get buy-in from different domains and Harry just put pictures on his Pentagon. And I thought, wow, I missed that one. And I think most of us have because I hadn't seen it. Anyone using pictures in the facets. Um, and for me, the end goal was community because um, that's in my area something. So that is going to change tomorrow. Okay. Wow. Okay. Thank you. Any other things that you know you're going to do differently, change? I hope this isn't going to sound heretic, heretical. Is that a word? It is a word. Um, <laughs> I've been using the RSD for over 10 years now, and I don't think I've been using it correctly. <laughs> I feel like I'm at an AA meeting, and I'm, you know, <laughs> I... I, I I think that's what an AA meeting would be like, I'm not sure. Chad, is it? That's what they're like? Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, I think that I'm giving the students too much information too early. Mm -hmm. And I think that... I'm sorry, I've forgotten your name, the nice Indian dancer. Sid, Sid said it exactly right. Students sometimes are just so overwhelmed with, with the doing and the work I think it's a good thing to be able to do at the end and they can reflect back and see themselves in it. But where I give it to them now, I don't think they see themselves in it because it's, it's another task to do. And Sue Bander and Ike in her workshop and some of the other work, I think Diane as well mentioned, they use this framework underneath to mm -hmm. help frame the questions to get the students, rather than giving it all to them up front. And that's been a huge takeaway from someone that's been using it for 10 years. That's really, really interesting, Cathy. Thank you. And it does strike me that that, that is about, is, well, at least the way I see that is, is, is about using the framework in an experiential learning mode. Mm, um, and yeah, that's, that's a bit of a threshold concept, maybe. I don't know. Interesting. So, Interesting. Yeah, so I just want to say that, you know, you should yeah. come away with a, this has been a really huge revelation yeah. for me. So, okay. thank you. Thank you. Any other um, things that somebody, you know, anything that you're going to do differently? It doesn't have to be huge, could be huge. Yes, colleague at the back. Just to focus on the point that was made about process and product and, um, and how we, we do tend to have the product and that's what the main assessment is about and that's what the rubric points to. And um, my thinking for me is to look at all of my assessments in the topic that I do in second semester, since it's just finished, it's really fresh in my head, but actually reframing some of the ways I'm assessing so that I am focused on process rather than the, just that final product mm. and reconsidering how the final exam's laid out because it's, at this point, 100 multiple choice questions. <laughs> we know how great that is, but for an 800 student biology topic, um, there's some logistic things, but I think there's actually with process in mind, better ways we can go about asking the questions on that exam and maybe not having as many, but we can still focus on process and them using the skills to take their exam as well. Mm. Thank you. And we've got time for one more, if there is one more. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Actually, what I'm thinking about, uh, something that I would change after this conference is about um, students thinking in mathematical context. So, yeah, we have been discussing this uh, in this morning because I have a research in optimizing problem-solving framework. So it's about uh, the framework have non-sequential facets. So as a mathematics, uh, we tend to, as mathematicians, we tend to do step-by-step uh, -step activities. So it's systematical, systematically processed. But in this uh, framework, we see it differently. Uh, the framework um, introduces us to other 
uh, process to solve a problem, especially in mathematics, mathematical problem solving, we uh, do not have to do it uh, in order, but we can just go back and forth in uh, MEL uh, framework. Okay. Thank you very much indeed, colleagues. That brings this session to a close. But, but what I do observe is that um, this conference, I think, well, has been in, an incredibly rich one and has, uh, has clearly changed. Clearly, it has melted minds. Clearly, you know, things have been taking shape and changes are going to happen as a result. And that's a tremendous test. Where are you, John? And there he is. Um, John, testament to you and your colleagues um, organizing this conference, and designing it, everybody participating in it. The contributions have been absolutely fantastic. And it's had, I, I think it's absolutely evident, it's had some fantastic outcomes. So well done.